welcome to Built for This Podcast, where if you're built for this shit, you're built for this shit. If you're not, listen up, because we're going to give you tools how to get through those moments in life to become great. Like, that's what it's about. Today, I got a great friend of mine, mentor, great friend, and just somebody that, you know, he just means a lot to me. And his name's Mark Willis. And let's bring Mark in now. Mark, what's up, buddy? How you doing today? Hey. It's great to I'm have doing you. doing fantastic. How are you? <laughs> yeah, welcome to the Bill for This podcast. I know you and I have had a lot of conversations. You are definitely built for this, 100%. So... <laughs> Um, give you a little background of Mark and I, you know, we met at the secret knock. Um, he was sitting at the hotel up at the restaurant, sitting at the bar. I, I, I spent the day with him at a table as we were listening to people speak on stage. And I kept looking over my shoulder and I'm like, oh, this dude's cool. Like I got to get to know him. And next thing you know, you know, the universe put us next to each other. I'm like, I got to go talk to this guy. Here it was. And we, you started sharing your food with me because I was hungry. And uh, right then, I'm like, it was like homies, right? It's just, it, it was like, yeah, here we are, man. So tell me, tell everybody, who is Mark? Like, what, what, you know? And uh, like, tell us who you are, brother. Uh, well, my name's Mark Willis. Um, I have been in dentistry for a little over 25 years um, as a, a dental lab owner and a, a dental lab technician. Um, gosh, that's kind of like my professional life. I have a, a training company where we teach cosmetic pr principles to dentists from, from around the world and help them build their practices um, into doing the, the kind of dentistry that they want to do and, and how to do it conservatively. But um, I'm married. I've got uh, eight children and uh, nine grandkids. So it's great. But uh, yeah, I am. Um, I love to cook. Um, years ago, I went to culinary school because I loved and enjoyed cooking so much figured I probably ought to learn how to do it the right way. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it, man. I do I do some speaking and some coaching and uh, run a couple of men's groups. Right, you're so that, deep, uh, bro. You're leaving out. I just like, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we, uh, this cat right here named Mark, he brought me into a men's group. And, um, uh, Man, I can tell you the moves since The Secret Knock, these things have changed my life and the people that are coming into my life. And I mean, like I said, the things that we did on the Monday night meeting, I've been applying every week and it's tools to affect my life in such a positive way with relationships, self-love, right? I, and a man that cries, right? I, it, you, 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 a tool that we learned from Jim Britt on that one was to was to uh actually no it was from you it was on you remember it was you with putting a calendar a year calendar and getting it out and you know as cliche as it sounds to put your phone down spend quality time with your children my kids are, have always told me you know my my kids are like Dad, Dad holds his phone. You know, he's not really fully paying attention when I'm talking to him, and and I and I hear it when I never really, it never really, you know, resonated in my head until you were saying that in this meeting, and I all these things started binging and remembering of, you know, the valuable time, and you said, you know, take the most important things in your life and block it out in a calendar, and nothing, nothing can affect those dates and times. The priority needs to be with your loved ones your children, your wife. And when you go into a, into a meeting or you're going in to spend time with them, put your phone away, like completely put it away and, and focus. Just keep focusing back on the, giving your attention to the one in front of you. And it was, and so I took Amy out. I really thought I'm going to apply this, you know, see how it goes. <laughs> and, 
And I always have my phone in my pocket. I have my phone s- somewhere. And my brain is always an entrepreneur thinking of work no matter where I'm at. If I'm with my kids, it, wherever I'm at. So I, I got another tool. And I don't know if it was from the pro- what we were talking about was focusing on the red dot. I don't know if that was something we talked about. I think it was. It was. It was you again, I'm pretty sure, wasn't it? May, may, may have been. And you said, you know, and focus on on the red dot, and your brain keeps going different ways, and you you got to bring it back to that. So I've been I've been you know working on on that muscle, the brain muscle of focusing on whatever is in front of me at task. That's been my thing. And so when I, we went to this, Amy and I blocked out four hours. I never had, and she was crying and I was crying. We never had these deep conversations back and forth, four hours. We went to dinner and it was the best date night I ever had. And when I got up to go to the bathroom, I pulled my phone out of my pocket. And I felt like just, a, 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 it hit me because I, 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 it didn't mean it. It was habit forming. And I put it and I was going to carry it in the bathroom. And all of a sudden I felt dirty. Like this is how attached I am to this thing. Right. And uh, I put the phone back and I was in the bathroom thinking, I, I've never felt this. Like I've never been f- fully a hundred percent. We always think we are, but we're not, you know, we're not. And so I came back and I'm like, and then I told her about it, and she goes, you noticed that my phone's still in my purse when I went to the bathroom, and I did not notice that. And what that did is it really, she heard us after the meeting. We talked about it. I tell her, you know, what I'm learning and what I'm going to apply to this week, and she's applying it too. And our our relationship went up at that moment just by the little things, man. So bless you, brother, man. Like I, I'm grateful That's you're in awesome. my life. I'm grateful you're in my life. And. <laughs> <laughs> not to take not to take the whole podcast over, but you know when people when no. people when people change you, you you honor it, and I have a lot of gratitude for you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Pat. There's um, I think that's a the concept of of being present fully in whatever it is that you're doing. Took me a long, long time, and you know I'm still not perfect at it. Um, but I've had to work on it because for, for a lot of my life, <clears throat> especially in the early days of my career, that's not where my focus was. You know, my focus was on building a business. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially startups, get that laser focus and everything else seems to disappear. And then even when you get home from your job, and you're with your kids or you're with your spouse, you're still focusing on on a, a project or a pitch that you have to do or you know what your next move is as a business owner. And so you're only giving a percentage of your whole self to your loved ones. And that was a, a mistake that I made for a long time in my life. Man, 55 years old and I'm learning that lesson and it feels feels <laughs> great. It feels great. You know, on the men's meeting, like what what put you what made you put the energy into it and bring this thing together? Because the the guests that you have in, like Jim Britt, right? It was like that's Tony <laughs> Robbins' mentor, and you know. And then I listen to Tony Robbins, and and I'm hearing everything go down the line. It's the same same stuff that Jim is saying. So it's just, and to have that interaction and email and, you know, people at that level saying, you know, you're important and here's my email, don't share it with the world. But if you need me, I'm here. Like that's magical and that's, that's it feels great to be part of that. So what brought you into bringing that little men's group together? Um. That's a good question. Um, I've got a group of friends that I'm in another group with that um, we try to get together three or four times a year. And we'll do it somewhere up in the mountains in a cabin, or we do a, a week long trip every year to Wyoming where we're completely cut off from the world. Um, <clears throat> and I have all these great friends that I'm really close to in one part of my life. And then I have another group of friends that I've gotten to know 
through my business, through organizations like Secret Knock, through other mastermind programs. And a lot of my friends and the other people in my life, I want to share those relationships with. I want them to be able to hear the things that I'm learning. Um, I've had some amazing mentors in my life that have taught me a lot and I'm really grateful for them. But I feel like two things. Number one, the best way to learn how to embrace something or to um, really implement it in your life is to have to teach it. Yeah. It's like that with, with anything that you do. As you transition from becoming the student to the teacher, that's where a lot of the learning happens. I noticed that with a lot of my, my technicians that I've trained over the years, I've trained hundreds of technicians and I can train them up to a certain point after years, they'll get to a certain level. And then it feels like there's a, a block. There's something that they're just not able to get through. And what I've learned is that's all they're going to get from me. At some point, there's things that they have to learn on their own. And the only way that they can do that, the only way I feel any of us can do that is if we start teaching it. If we start doing those things and putting them into action, whether it's teaching by example or whether it's what I do with my technicians is I force them to teach the younger generation. We have new people that get hired on. And I say, listen, okay, your responsibility is to help train this person because that process makes them better. It makes them look at why am I doing things this way? Because I have to explain it to somebody else. And I've been fortunate enough to have some amazing mentors. And I, I felt like it was my responsibility to share that information with others because it's, it's helped me and it continues to help me. As I share that with other people, I yeah. meet new people. Um, like you said, look at the relationship that, that you and I have been able to build in yeah. just a short time. Yep. You know, it's through that kind of thing that you meet new people, that you f find answers to your problems by creating a group where we can all share with each other what we're going through and how did you overcome this particular problem? in your life, whether it's a relationship or a business issue. Um, for a long time, I felt like I could do everything on my own. Understand like, that. Yeah, I understand. I that. didn't need anybody else. I, because, you know, I had been hurt by people. I'd been hurt in business relationships. And so I got to a point where I was like, fuck this, man. I can, I, I have to rely on myself. That's the only person I can rely on. But, you just you can't you can't go that far when you're when you're just an island you know you you got to have other people around to inspire and and help you i mean i just got off that rock you know i was empire i didn't really listen i didn't have many mentors you know um the ones that i did have passed away so i felt like i was stranded but going into this new life you know over the last six months and, and it's really, I'm a visual guy. So when somebody puts a toolbox in front of me and you don't open it up, you're never, you can talk about it all you want. I can be as many men's groups, I, uh, groups I can go to see, I can do all this. But if I don't have a journal or I don't have a toolbox and I don't open it up and apply those skills immediately to my life, I'm not going to go anywhere. And I also have to understand, and I am, that I'm a I'm, I'm humble man now. You know, I'm a lot more humble than I used to be. I'm super vulnerable because it is a scary theme to taking leaps, you know, if I'm going to listen to somebody else's advice and apply it. But, but the magic is happening in my life, and I can't even explain how fast it's, it's moving. I, with Greg, Greg is, Greg is he's a, I mean, you text him and talk. I mean, he's a one-word one text kind of guy, right? Or I get a, <laughs> I get a sentence out of him. And it's like last week he says, Saturday, my house. <laughs> and he goes, and then 
group of men you're, I'm going to introduce you to. I San Diego, right? It's 420 in cannabis, so I got I got 420 events to go to all over. And there's nothing more important than showing up at Greg's house because that's where the toolbox is, where it's going to change my life and keep me on this path moving forward. And I have so much gratitude for the new me that's able to apply myself and show the fuck up and and be in action and service. It's just his world. Yeah. It's a whole new world for me. My relationship's better. My dogs love me more. I, my my son, <laughs> PJ, I talk to my son every day on the phone. He either calls me or I call him. And this is all new stuff for me becoming this new individual, you know, and it's guys like you that are helping me become the new me, you know, Patrick King, not so much the soil King anymore, but I'm finding Patrick King. So, yeah. Well, man. one of the things you said, I think is, is key to that. And that is being humble enough to actually open the toolbox Yeah, because we, we go to meetings and we, we hear people talk and we read books and then we don't apply the things that we hear. And so yeah. nothing changes, yeah. you know, um, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon that when I teach courses, whether it was to dental technicians or whether we're teaching to dentists, <clears throat> there's a common theme that I guess that occurs with, with people a lot. And it's, I call it, I like, this is how I like to do it. Because that's the first, sometimes the very first words out of someone's mouth after they listen to a master teaching them what they need to do by giving them the toolbox and showing them the tools and how to use them. One of the first things that many people say is, well, the way I like to do it is X, Y, Z. Yeah. And so they've already shut off yeah. the ability to utilize those tools because we come into these situations with these habits and this mentality of well this is just how i do it so but if it's working so well for you then why are you reading the books <laughs> why are you going to the meetings you know we have to be humble enough to say okay maybe i don't know how to do it or maybe my way isn't the best way i'm going to find someone who's doing it the way i want to do it someone that i want to emulate that i want to learn from and just do what they say for a while. Maybe it's 30 days, maybe it's 90 days, yep. six months, whatever it is, just follow the rules that they've laid out, use the tools that they're giving you and see what happens. If it doesn't work for you, then pivot. Yeah, exactly. It seems to be working. It, it's I got to a point in my life where I never had to work again. The empire was built, right? I was gonna retire and just have fun and educate, right? Didn't, didn't work out like that again. You know, I went through the, I went through the housing crunch, right? We're 08 downturn, been right in the middle of building my, my own subdivision, right? Name it. I named the streets. I did everything. And it's like right in the middle of it, right? <laughs> Swipped out from underneath me. But again, this time, and it was this time I can really grasp it and say that um, it, it's changed my life, Mark. Like my life is, I'm a different human being than I was just a short time ago. And I'm the type of human being right now that I would want to hang out with, right? And I'm finding people like you that are cut from the same cloth who generally just don't want to waste your time but want to want to give and receive in a reciprocalness and grow together, you know? And it's magical, brother. It's just magical, man. Yeah. That's honestly what I'm, what I'm all about now. That's what I'm trying to build. Um, you know, as we talked in the past about hardships that we've each been through and, and mm -hmm. the struggles that we've had, and I think there's struggles that everybody has, especially if you're in business, if you're an entrepreneur, um, you're going to go through hard times. Yeah. You know, like you said, your, your life didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to. Mine certainly hasn't you know um 15 years ago i was uh, partners with my brother in a in a business that we had made wildly successful and 
I lost control of my life, man. I, I made a lot of bad decisions, a lot of selfish decisions, and I lost all of it. Lost my business, lost my marriage, my home, everything, and was homeless for a while, sleeping on the floor in my office, and had to rebuild it from scratch. Um, and the only way I was able to do that is I had a, a couple of close friends that stuck with me, that stuck by my side. And uh, it was it was really tough, but they helped me get through it. Um, had had help from a lot of other people as well, <laughs> other mentors. Yeah. But um, it, it's not always going to work out the way you you want. And it for a long time, I was. I was living in the past, you know, I was like, man, this, this is because I had an amazing, had an amazing business. Everything was going great, you know? Um, and ultimately what happened was a hundred percent my fault, but it took me a long time to recognize that. Yeah. And so I was living in the past for a long time, man, just kind of mourning the loss of what I, what I could have had. Yeah. Um, and it took a long time, but I finally came to the realization that I've, I've got to let that go. Um, I've got to rebuild. I've got to rebuild a life. I've got to rebuild a business. And um, there's reasons that we go through this stuff. Facts. You know, the, the, friend, the, the friendships that I have now and the relationships I have now, I would have never had those. Um, the things that, that I've learned over the past 15 years because of that, of that event, um, I never would have learned. And it's made me a much better person, uh, a much more well-rounded person, and uh, a lot happier in a lot of ways. Yeah. So it's so funny this this morning i got one i got one left uh, this the uh, secret mo the secret knock homeless bag right remember that the bags yeah. so I, i'd like to <laughs> light on why you know I, I i can't wait to put some energy into that i'm meeting with greg like i said this saturday going to his house and one thing i want to do is put energy into that campaign right and because it meant something to me and it has and, and then the story of why why it is is because of you. And I keep going back and I'm like, man, I think about this all the time. Like this guy actually traded his room to a homeless guy. Can you just elaborate on that for a little bit? Like tell that story. Like, yeah. That was yeah. <laughs> so I, <laughs> when people hear that story, they, they um, think it was just, a very altruistic thing to do that I was so kind that I was willing to give up my hotel room to a homeless guy. Um, and I'd like to think that I just did that out of the kindness of my heart, but there's a little more to the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a, it's a practice that I, that I've used throughout my life. Um, I don't always do it, but when I recognize that I'm in, in a, in a negative pattern, I'll do things like that. I'll give you two examples. So the first, the first one is I met this secret knock event in San Diego and, um, I get back to my hotel room and they hadn't changed the sheets on the bed. They hadn't turned the room over or cleaned it. So I'm leaving the hotel to go out to dinner. And I just asked the front desk if I could get some fresh linens for my bed assuming that they would go up and put fresh linens on my bed. So <clears throat> I get back to the hotel after dinner. And when I walk in, they hand me a bedroll. And I'm like, what the hell? So I go up, change the sheets. I'm like, this is some bullshit, man. This is a hotel. I'm paying these guys to clean my room. And they're making me make, make my own bed. And the thought process of like, kind of like thinking that I'm so important that I shouldn't have to do that, you know? 
<laughs> we get these like we get these little these things like we think we're so important and it's it's almost like that you know don't you know who, don't you know who I am kind of a mentality yep and so um I was pissed off and as I'm sitting there making the bed and I'm just steamed I remember walking back to the hotel past like maybe seven or eight homeless guys just on the sidewalk. And it was a cold night in San Diego. It was raining. <clears throat> and I was like, man, you got to do something. So I packed all my stuff in my suitcase and walked down the road that I had just come, just come <laughs> past, come up past all these homeless guys. And I see this guy, he's setting up his cardboard on the sidewalk. And, um, I just sat down and started talking to him and there was clearly some mental health issues that he was dealing with. So it was kind of a little, little bit hard to connect with, but I found out that he had been a truck driver for Walmart and this was, Oh, I don't know, 20 some odd years ago, he had gotten in an, in an accident and lost his job. And after that, he just could not, get it together. He just said he, he lost his family, lost his home, couldn't get another job, um, had a lot of medical bills and had been homeless for 20 years. And so I asked him if he'd be willing to trade, trade me spots for the night. Um, so he showed me like where he slept and where, where his spot was. And I took him back to the hotel and took him up to the room and, and let him in because I knew the hotel, if he walked in, the hotel was gonna, they would have turned him away. So I just walked with him and let him into the room and and then went back and tried to get some sleep uh, on the side of the street. I wasn't prepared, man. I didn't have a blanket. So I, I put on, cardboard. got out my cardboard. clothes out of my suitcase. I had a, <laughs> some, some cardboard boxes. <laughs> and uh, I put on like three layers of clothes, all the clothes I brought with me. And uh, dude, I, it, I couldn't sleep. So I mean, I'd sleep for like maybe five, 10 minutes and then a car would go by and wake me up or something. So at like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, I was freezing, I was tired. I'm like, I gotta get some sleep. So I tried to find another hotel that was vacant and I walked for a couple miles trying to find a hotel, couldn't find a hotel. So eventually just went back and sat on the sidewalk until about an hour before the event was supposed to start and then went back to my room and showered. And, and uh, <laughs> so the night before my, my, my phone was about to die. And, um, you know, Kelly, who yeah. Kelly Cardenas, yeah. um, uh, my buddy that, that co-hosts the event, lives in San Diego. So I send him a text message, just kind of showing him where I was and what was going on in case something happened to me. There had someone had to know wh where I was. Well, I show up for the event the next morning and Kelly plays this video that I sent to him for the for the <laughs> group. <laughs> on the big and then screen. brings me up on stage. And yeah, yeah, and then brings me up and asks me about the experience. Um, but it was it was something that I felt like I had to do, not only to be kind to someone else, but to get my head right. Because I was going I was just in a negative headspace. Um, the other example is that a lot of people in, in the group have heard because I've, I've talked about it quite a bit. Um, Things were going rough at work. This was probably two years ago. Um, we'd slowed down from COVID. I was frustrated with clients. I was frustrated with my employees. I was thinking, man, this this is the hardest job. This is terrible. I'm just sick of this crap. And I'm out to dinner at this new Japanese restaurant. And um, I'm talking to the owner, the chef. And I had just gotten out of culinary school a year before. And he's telling me about how difficult it is for him because he can't find help. Um, and 
he doesn't know what to do. He needs help in the kitchen and he doesn't know what to do. And I just said, Hey, I, I'll come work for you. I'll, I'll come, I'll come, I'll wash dishes or chop vegetables or, you know, cook, do whatever you need me to do. And so, uh, I started doing that. I'd go to work. Um, things were a little bit slow. So I had most of my afternoons were free. So I'd come home, change and go to the restaurant and work till 10 o'clock at night in the restaurant. Um, never, never took a paycheck. Um, that wasn't what I was there for. Um, but after about two or three weeks, man, my, back was killing me because you know you're standing in a hot kitchen slaving over the stove or washing dishes my back was hurting um i was like this is freaking hard man and i started re realizing and recognizing that there's a lot of people in this world that are doing those jobs yeah you know <clears throat> they're either in the service industry or yeah they're doing you know grunt work at a construction site or whatever it is and that's what they're having to do to provide for their family right and i'm i'm you know i'm 50 years old but dude i could only handle a month or so of that and and it changed my perspective again i'm like wow i i got it pretty good you know i, I sit yeah. in, sit in my office and, and do my work and yeah I, there's frustration in every everything you do there's going to be um problems that you can you can always focus on the negative things but um i chose to put myself in someone else's shoes literally so that i could gain perspective on my life yes and skylar skylar's in in our group uh, in our in our men's group that oh meets on I, yeah night. Wow. He, okay. He's, he's and in fact, two, two weeks ago, <laughs> it was a Saturday afternoon and I didn't have anything going on. And I called him up to see what he was doing. And he's like, Oh, I got to work. We're short staffed. I'm like, well, I guess I'll come into the restaurant and spend, <laughs> spend the rest of the day. That's a friend <laughs> working with you. That's a friend. You know? um, Put you in so perspective anyway, for sure. That's been something that's that's really helped me. And, and I think we can do it in small ways. It doesn't always have to be something as grand as that. Um, but when we start getting frustrated with our lives or our jobs or our business, my advice would be to look for something that's completely opposite and try to get into it somehow so that you can see things from a different perspective. Right. Try to try to see things if if you're if you're an owner of a business for so long that you forgot what it's like to be an employee, go be an employee somewhere for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And it'll change it'll change your perspective. It does. I mean, even I mean I've had, you know, I, I went from 36 employees, salespeople all over to uh, now running my company at every angle and let me tell you i'm not an accountant right i don't i'm not a bookkeeper you know i i can't even figure out what taxes to pay when i need to ta pay them and and i'm like just trying to create all these different jobs what i have learned is i have learned that some of my employees you know they really they really did a lot of good for me over the years and i didn't give them enough credit but i also learned that you know a number of them didn't and I was right about that. But yep. being in perspective and putting it on the other side, you get to see it from a different view in life and in anything, yeah. right? So and to, to add to that with Amy, Amy always tells me, I think we talked about this a little bit, is she tells me, I never really, she goes, okay, you know, like in, you know, I, because the bigger you get and the more public figure status you get, you get a lot more pictures with a lot of different people when we go around. And, you know, with... With uh, other women, I've you know I've always been like, well, you flirt a little, you do this because I'm putting my arm around them or my cheeks touching and stuff like that. When we're taking a picture, I don't really mean it to to be like that. I'm just happy and it's, it feels good that somebody actually wants to take a picture with you. To be honest, you know, it feels good like you're leveling up and did something right in life. But when she says, you know, and I try to tell her, well, it's just a picture, and she says to me, you know, well, put it in the other. What you know, put your shoes on the other foot. 
And when I start looking at the perception from somebody else's view, I can see myself in a different light. And she's right. Like, how would I like it if she was next to some dude putting her cheek up and arm around the shoulder and, you know, all that. So <laughs> we've come up to, you know, and think and just that. But there's a lot of those things in life that in perspective that I'm I'm putting myself in and looking from different angles. And one of them is looking at my old self and my old behavior. You know, I was an, I was angry. You know, I was I was egotistical. Uh, I had, you know, my ego was inflated. Um, I was king of the, you know, the empire. And now I just want to be in service. I don't want to be that guy as much anymore. I mean, I love what I built. I'm going to build it again, but I'm going to build it with a, with a, you know, a different team this time of reciprocalness. So, I mean, yeah, man, love you, brother. It's great. It's great. You and I connecting at this level and, you know, be me just to be able to share this real conversations nowadays you know this you know conversations mm -hmm. 10 years ago i can yeah. really have you know, it's, it's a different different light a couple of questions no, for you Look, I wanna, right. okay i want to hide on the we got we're gonna have to wrap it up real quick but i want to i mean do you you want to talk about i mean i know you've done the you know uh, the use uh, the smiles of hollywood and some musician you want to throw any people out there can you i don't know if you can They're like you know <laughs> um that's a that that gets a little sketchy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have to be I have to be careful about that. Yeah. Um, but I but I I've done a lot of work out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, a lot of people in the music business. Um, my my partner at the time has always kind of been the dentist to the stars, at least when it comes to country music and and the movie stars that live in that in that area so we've done a lot a lot of smiles for a lot of famous people people that everyone would know but yeah we'll leave it we'll leave it at that and then one takeaway <laughs> a takeaway like if you had to pull one thing comes to mind from the secret knock like what and uh, you know obviously you're, you're back every year and you know what is that i mean what's the draw to you i think the 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 first thing that that i recognized the first time i went that i thought was so cool was i've been to a lot of conferences where the the speakers that are that are held at such high regard will come onto stage and they'll speak for a half hour or, or an hour and then they're gone right and it's like they're so separate from everyone else in the crowd and the weird thing at Secret Knock was, it's like, you know, you and I are sitting at basically the same table. I don't know who you are. And the next minute you're up on stage telling this amazing story about your life and, and you're there the whole time. So we get a chance to meet and become friends. And that's how I've become friends with, with a lot of these guys. Yeah. Um, the speakers at these events actually are there for the event. And yeah. The people that are there for the event are the speakers and almost every single person i've met there has impacted my life in one way or another we've yeah. either become great friends or um we've made a connection that has connected us to someone else that has created some some cool business opportunities and it's it's it was unlike any other conference i'd ever been to so I'll see you in a few hours in our men's group. Who do we have as a speaker in that tonight? Uh, it's my good friend. His name's Ricky Lundell. He is uh, an unbelievable um, athlete. Um, started out in, in jiu-jitsu, uh, became a, a, black, a black belt in jiu-jitsu at a very young age. Went on to win pretty much every jiu-jitsu and grappling tournament you could ever imagine. Won Ab Abu Dhabi multiple times, um, trained more famous UFC champions than you could name. Um, took over the Bishop Gorman wrestling team uh, several years ago. And uh, his whole philosophy is, if you want to get better, you only have to get better 1% every day. If you just focus on 1% better than you were yesterday and you do that every day, what happens after 365 days? 
it's a big percent. I'm or right. That's, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, and and that's that's how he lives his life. He's one of the most dedicated um, people that I've ever known to whatever he's pursuing yeah. at, at, at the time. So it's going to be good. He's an interesting cat and super talented. It's like a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It's that one percent, right? Don't worry on the entire journey. Just hit that one percent better than the day prior. Yeah, I love it, man. It's great, great having you on the show. Great having you in my life. Looking forward to seeing you in about five more hours. And uh, excited. <laughs> Anything else you want to throw awesome. out there before we cut this? No, just uh, thanks for the invitation. Happy to to participate. I love what you're doing. I think it's awesome. Um, always happy to support in any way that I can. And I'm really grateful for you in my life too, Pat. Gratitude, so. brother. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. So I guess I'll end the show with uh man, this is built for this podcast. If you, if you've gone through the heat and you've made it through the other side, man, it's glorious. And it's those moments in life that we need to remember and we need to share with others. Because when I was going through mine, I was closed. I didn't have the reach out. There wasn't mentors around me at the time. And this show is, is for those people who are going through the heat and need to reach out. And they need to go. They can find, this, they can find the podcast, YouTube, go anywhere. Hit me up. You know what I mean? If you're going through it and you need a way and you need someone just to tell you it's going to be okay and to do you know the journey of of one percent or one step uh, you know is uh i'm always going to answer my phone <laughs>